I'm here at the start of the Pedars Way. Hi folks, welcome back, I'm Andrew, and today I'm out riding the Pedars Way. Pedars Way, it's a 74 kilometer trail, long distance trail between Nettishall, which is just outside Thetford, about five miles to the east, and it routes in a virtually a straight line to the north-northwest, ends up at uh, home next to the sea. Nettishall Heath lies just south of the Norfolk border in Suffolk. The route starts from a small car park and heads northwesterly, taking in several villages such as Little Cressingham, Castle Acre, and passes west of Great Massingham before ending on the coast at home next to the sea, a total distance of 74 kilometres. I've been wanting to ride the Pedars Way for some time, so decided to jump on the train from Norwich to Thetford, where I alighted at the old station building, steeped in character and atmosphere. With my Canyon Exceed hardtail bike, I headed east on the 1066 for a few kilometres and soon found myself on wooded lanes riding towards Nettishall Heath, a nature reserve and site of special scientific interest. My anticipation grew for an epic adventure on my doorstep, a journey through forest over breaks to the sea, a true Norfolk adventure. Now, according to the literature, this is uh, predominantly a bridleway, so you can ride this apart from apparently four small sections. So um, I'll point those out as we go. Norfolk County Council literature recommends that the first part of the route is unsuitable for riding between the start at Nettishall Heath through to Bridgham Heath. But if you don't mind a few scratches, it is actually doable. It's a very ancient trail, the Pedars Way. It dates back probably before the Romans, but it's most famous for its Roman usage, I guess. In the 15th century, this track was used for pilgrims who used the track to get from Thetford and East Anglia, Suffolk, the surrounding area up to the shrine at Walsingham. It has been suggested that the Pedars Way was not actually created by the Romans, but was already in existence over 2,000 years ago. An ancient trackway, perhaps a branch or an extension of the Ignil Way, used and remodelled by the Romans. However, it wasn't until the 15th or 16th centuries that it was dubbed the Pedars Way in respect of the pilgrims who would walk the route to the coast and the religious centre at Walsingham. The name is said to be derived from the Latin pedster, meaning by foot or on foot, and first appeared on a map dated in the year 1587. Shortly after crossing the A1066, I came off the way, diverted through the village of Brettingham, past St Andrew's Church, in order to cross the River Thet, before once again joining the route between Brettingham and Bridgham Heaths.
I'm approaching Bridgham Heath and in a couple of kilometers I've got to negotiate getting across the busy A11. This area of East Anglia is known as the Brex. It's got its own ecology, very sandy based soil. Because of the land usage by the MOD and some of these preserved heathlands, the ecology around here is really protected and it really hasn't changed for very many years. It's a bit like the land that time forgot and it's nice to see that nature has a chance to establish itself and thrive. the A11, made it. That's a pretty nasty road to cross. Anyway, it's behind me now. So far the Pedars Way has been predominantly in the woods and uh, quite close terrain, single track. Stung my legs to bits on the stinging nettles and brambles. I kept my jacket on to keep my arms protected, but my bare legs stung to bits. And now I've got a railway to cross. Lovely big fire track. Trees all around me. Silver birch by the looks of it here. And a big pine forest up ahead. BBC series Dad's Army was filmed quite a lot in Norfolk and some of the scenes at the start and at the end of the show 
where Captain Mannering and his men are running across the open heath was filmed here at Stanta Training Range. I'm really enjoying the ride. It's a, a nice dry day, a little bit overcast, not too warm. It's not wet, so that's great. There was a fork back there indicating the Pedars Way cycle route, which was clearly diverging away from the main footpath. So I'm following that and my, my Garmin keeps beeping at me, telling me that I'm off route, but I'm gonna trust the signage which has been excellent so far. And hopefully it will feed me back onto the Pedars Way proper. What a wonderful looking cottage, complete with dovecote. Nice to just pop out the trees and see a bit of civilization. And I'm back on a bit of asphalt. Just through the hamlet of Thompson, when you think of the Pedars Way, and you look at it at the map, it looks like a virtually straight line between Nettish and... Oh, there's a deer. I don't know if you saw the deer. Fleeting glimpse. Yeah. So there are one or two deviations off the main Pedars Way for cycles, and this being the biggest of them, Looks like there's a sign left now. Pedars way left. Back on the Pedars way. And uh, I've got the military training area on my right. Just look at that incredible pine forest. The colors are incredible. Fantastic. I'm on the B1108 and it's quite busy. The sign says Pedars Way walking on the verge and for cycles on the road. Got another kilometre to go of this. I've never done this before. Drive through on my bike at McDonald's. Hi there, you alright? Hi there. Um, could I have a Big Mac meal please? With black coffee? Yep, yeah, and anything else? That's it, thanks. Yeah, lovely, that's £5.99. Thanks a lot. Well, it worked. Not really cycling food needs must. Well, very convenient McDonald's. <laughs> Literally, just as you cross, I think it's the A47 here, Pedals Way is about 20 metres over there. Got McDonald's, so this is just a little snack. Keep me going. The monastic ruins at Castleacre were once a Cluniac priory and is thought to have been founded in the year 1089 by William de Warrenay, 2nd Earl of Surrey. The church was consecrated sometime within two years of 1146. The priory was home for up to 30 monks. William de Warrenay was a Norman knight who had fought alongside William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings. He chose Acre in Norfolk as the headquarters of his East Anglian land holdings. Like many Normans, his fortunes were transformed by the conquest of England. The 
Priory was also used by pilgrims and visiting clergy from around East Anglia. The nave of the church is one of the oldest parts of the ruin. Subsequent additions continued to be added until the priory was dissolved in the year 1537 under King Henry VIII, and when the king gave the dissolved priory to the Duke of Norfolk, complete with its estates, the remaining monks were turfed out. As the evening draws in, I press on northward to my overnight wild camp, but that's it for this video. Please consider subscribing to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and hit the notification bell to be ready to watch the next video. And, happy riding.